page 31. The rational ones amongst you, to whom the writing of the teaching of the truth is given, recognize it as the truth, just as they recognize their own children. Others, however, are irrational, because they knowingly or consciously conceal the truth. All truth is in the creation and in its laws and recommendations. Therefore, do not create your own and false truth in yourselves. Otherwise, you are turning yourselves into people without equitableness or unfair ones slash irresponsible ones slash inequitable ones and into doubters. Everyone has a determination towards which they strive. Therefore, compete with one another in good works so that you compete complete great things wherever you may be. Combine together to perform great works. Then you have the might to do and achieve everything that you strive for. However, always use and do everything in goodness so that you do not end up as people without equitableness or unfair ones slash irresponsible ones slash inequitable ones. And wherever you come from, Turn your face, or eyes, towards the truth, so that no abnormal doubt arises in you against it, and your doings are not heedless. And wherever you go, turn your face, or eyes, towards the truth. And wherever you are, also turn your face towards it there. If you do so, then the ones living in equitableness, or fairness and responsibility, will have no objection towards you excepting those amongst them who wallow in inequity or irresponsibility slash unfairness, who lie and deceive, and do everything to harm you. However, do not fear them, but only be afraid of denying the truth, so that goodness can be perfected in you, and so that you are rightly led. Just as the proclaimers, the prophets, came to you out of your midst, announcing the signs, or teaching slash evidence, of the truth and bringing them forth, so you will be cleansed from unknowledge and inequity or unfairness slash irresponsibility if you follow the teaching that is given by the proclaimers, the prophets, and by the writing of the truth which teaches you what you need to know. Therefore, think about the truth that is presented and explained to you by the proclaimers, the prophets, who think of you in love. Therefore, thank them, and do not be unthankful to them. O you who are knowing in the truth, search for help in the learning of the truth teaching and in patience, because truly there is a boon upon your head, or mental block equals consciousness, thoughts, feelings, and psyche, if you go forth in steadfastness. And do not say about those who have been slain for the truth that they had fallen into foolishness, because truly they were in good senses, but they were not understood and were slandered due to their love for the truth by those who wallow in inequity or irresponsibility slash unfairness and truth deniers. And the ones slain for the truth were alive in their nature and in their inner world or consciousness. But those who wallow in inequity or irresponsibility slash unfairness and the truth deniers were living dead. Truly, you will, be, you will all be tested by the appearance or nature with anxiety and fear, hunger and loss of your goods and chattels and life and all that which is of nourishment. But when you are connected to patience, then you will surely overcome all tests because it is part and parcel of the life for things to go up and down, for good to alternate with bad, of which there can be no doubt. The message to the patient ones is, however, that all strivings yield good fruits, and time will ultimately change everything to the good. The believers say when unfortune strikes them that it is the will of their divinity or of their tin gods. However, because there is no determining divinity and also no determining tin gods, then neither their ministration nor retaliation exists, because in all things you alone are the determining factor in the carrying out of your own responsibility. 
However, the unknowing ones and those who wallow in inequity or irresponsibility slash unfairness have fallen into belief and are looking for their salvation in divinities and tin gods and hoping that these will drip grace and blessing onto their heads because they believe they are rightly led. Certainly, the prophet's signs or marvels of the truth appear to be miracles or outstanding things, but they are a creation of the might of their own inner world or consciousness, and therefore it is no ignominy for them to perform signs or marvels. However, those who learn the talent of giving signs from the prophets and use this for their own gain in order to dazzle and to obtain advantages or benefits and profit from it, they are the ones who are exposing themselves to ignominy and are burdening themselves with unright. And it is no ignominy for those who care for the truth and travel to places where the truth teaching is revealed. And therefore it is no ignominy but a good work, if good is done beyond the limits of duty. And therefore it is no ignominy if help is bestowed on the truth teaching in any wise so that it can spread amongst you. However, it is not rightful to make commerce for profit out of the truth teaching, and it is also not rightful to proselytize and persuade for the truth teaching and to impose it onto the unknowing ones and to attack them in their thoughts and feelings. Human beings shall only come to the real truth through their own will in the need of their demand and in complete freedom of their thinking, in honest striving for the real truth and sense of the life. Those wallowing in inequity or irresponsibility slash unfairness and the, and the unknowing ones amongst you falsify what the prophets bring in the truth teaching, in signs or marvels slash evidence, and in the guideline or signposting slash leading thought, which they teach it to you through word and writing. And you curse the prophets, and in hatred, also the people of your kind or human beings all around. Nevertheless, the prophets forgive you, but the people you have cursed amongst the people of your kind or human beings do not forgive you and curse you also. You, however, if you feel sorry and you improve yourselves and profess yourselves open to the truth, you will be representatives of the prophets, so that you shall pass on the recognized truth to all those who ask about it. However, you shall not proclaim your wisdom unasked and not attack other people with it, such as the believers do, who have become a slave to divinities and tin gods. And if you regret your unknowledge and your inequity or unfairness, and improve yourselves, and profess yourselves open to the truth teaching, then you must forgive yourselves, because you alone are the forgiving ones for yourselves when you have found the path to the truth and freedom, to peace, to love, and to consonance or harmony in yourselves, and have thereby created a living horde in yourselves. Those, however, who are unknowing ones and ones wallowing in inequity or irresponsibility slash unfairness and eke out an existence as such, they curse themselves all in all because their present existence becomes an unjoy and sooner or later a torment. But those who are distressed by unjoy and torment shall not remain so, because they shall moderate their own punishment that they have imposed on themselves, and come to recognition if they turn to the truth of the creation and its laws and recommendations, and fulfill them. And there is no God, no one God, and there is no tin God, no one tin God, who is favorable and benevolent, because God and tin God are inventions and lies and delusions of the brain of people of your kind, or the human brain, and are of no use in any good wise whatsoever, except in evil for enslaving the people of your kind, 
or human beings, through the mendacity of the priests serving God and tin gods, through whom their believers are subjugated and exploited. Truly, in the creation of the firmaments, or universe, and in the earth roundnesses, or worlds slash planets, and in the change from day and night, and in the flying machines which fly through the air and the skies, and in the ships which travel over the seas, lakes, and rivers, carrying everything that is useful to you, and in the water or rain that falls from the firmament and invigorates earth, and scattered over it the people of your kind, or human beings, and all kinds of animals and other creatures, and in the change of the weather, and the winds and the clouds which float between the firmament and earth, and the sun in the sky, and the stars and the moon in the firmament at night, all of these are real signs of the truthly creation, which stands as an unmeasurable secret above all life, above all firmaments, or universe, and above all earths, slash worlds, slash planets. And they are signs, or evidence, for everyone who recognizes the truth and understands it, who turns to it and forms their present existence with it. However, there are others amongst you who have set up a divinity or a tin god or an object of worship for themselves because they are unknowing in the truth of the primal raising or creation and love their god or tin god or object as if it were living and truthful. And they are sick in their belief and without rationality because they are unable to distinguish between their delusion and the truth of reality. They are malefactors, or irresponsible ones, against the truth, and if they could see themselves as malefactors, or lawbreakers, and understand it, then they would realize the hardship and the misery and the punishment that they themselves are imposing in themselves, and which never comes from the primal raising or creation, or from outside. If those who lead you in a delusional belief in a god or ten gods, then cut themselves off from you. Then you are helpless as motherless lambs, because all your bonds have been cut to your leaders who keep you in the servitude or bondage of belief. And you who follow your false leaders of an untrue truth in belief in a god or ten gods, you are afraid of turning back to the truth because you believe that you would deny your own god or ten gods as you are denying the real truth. However, if you turn around and turn yourselves towards the truth, then you will recognize the truth of origination, or creation, and its works. Therefore, you would free yourselves from your anguish and from the fire of self-punishment. Eat of everything that serves you as food on earth, fruits, vegetables, and meat, of every fruit and every berry, of all herbs, and of all animals and creatures of every kind, and of everything that tastes good to you. Because nothing is banned or forbidden, rather everything is allowed to you that tastes good to you, and is not poisonous to you. If, however, someone forbids you from doing this, then they are not doing this doing rightfully, are your obvious enemy, and are contradicting the laws of origination or creation and the truth teaching. They only bid you to do evil and disgraceful things which contradict the laws of the primal wellspring or creation, and that you speak ill of the truth and of things that you do not know. And all of those amongst you who are knowing in real truth, eat of all good things that are given to you through the laws of formation or creation and of appearance or nature on earth. Be thankful for everything that you receive because the goodness and the benevolence of the creative or creation and of the appearance or nature created by it are vast and without end. You shall only be prohibited from nourishing yourselves with things that have themselves perished and are rotten and therefore are inedible. Given to you 
are all edible and non-poisonous fruits and vegetables. All fermented juices, or alcohol such as wine, beer, spirits, etc., and all the meat of all animals and other creatures from which you wish to eat, from the small rodent, from the rabbit, the goat, the sheep, and the pig, cattle, the horse, and the camel, and everything that tastes good to you, but always in a tolerable and healthy quantity, without gorging or gluttony. The animals and other creatures, rodents, rabbits, goats, and sheep, pigs and cattle, horses and camels, and everything that is edible, may appear unclean externally because they live in dirt, but on the inside they are clean and good. Therefore, they may serve as nourishment once the outside is cleaned of dirt. Also, the blood of the animals and other creatures may serve as nourishment in some cases, and the fermented juice or alcohol such as wine, beer, spirits, etc., shall only be enjoyed in a small measure so that no drunkenness obscures the senses. Therefore the measure shall not be exceeded in any things, and obedience shall be practiced in all things, so that all nourishment serves the bodily good and health. And if it is said to you that you shall follow the teachings, teaching of the prophets, then you do not want to follow the call, and say that you want to hurry after what was found existing since time immemorial in the belief in divinities and ten gods. However, as your talk is like this, even your fathers and mothers did not have any intellect and did not walk on the right way. And those who are unknowing and have fallen into inequity or unfairness slash irresponsibility are like a man who was calling to something that cannot hear and cannot see anything, is deaf, blind, and dumb, and does not perceive any call or any cry. Those amongst you who falsify and deny any part whatsoever of what is given through the laws of the creation, creative or creation, and of the teaching of the true prophets, and their truthly writings, and those who accept the slander or calumny in exchange for a miserable price, they are, full, they are filling their admonishment or conscience with nothing but fire that devours them inwardly and makes them loveless, inequitable, or unfair, unknowing, unfree, unpeaceful, and unharmonious. They cannot cleanse their admonishment or conscience and they impose a great inner punishment on themselves because they are the ones who barter for an erroneous assumption. And they do not know how great is their un underestimation of the burning fire of their admonishment or conscience. The proclaimers, the prophets, have indeed brought the writing of the real truth, but nevertheless it is certain that you are at odds with the word and the writing of the proclaimers, the prophets. You have gone far in enmity and curse and slay the proclaimers, the prophets, who are bringing you the truth teaching and a true life. Equitableness or fairness is not a matter of you turning your face or eyes to the east, west, south, or north and knowing a lot about the world, but only the one who accepts the real truth, the truth of the creative or creation, and its existence in reality, its laws and recommendations, and all its inexhaustible works, truly lives in equitableness or fairness. And equitableness or fairness consists in learning the writing of the proclaimers, the prophets, and leading one's present existence in accordance with their truth, in love, peace, and freedom, and in consonance or harmony, and equitableness or fairness, consists in giving your surplus gains to the needy and to orphans, as well as to wayfarers, and all those who are obliged to request a charitable donation, or to those who are prisoners and who are starving. And equitableness or fairness is rewarding those who keep their promises and do not break their word, 
when they have given their word. And equitableness, or fairness, is helping those who are patient in their poverty and affliction, as well as those who are steadfast in the truth in times of battle, or times of war, so that they may honestly prove themselves and no longer become thieves, deceivers, murderers, and the like, and not turn to a god or tin gods in anxiety and fear. Through your belief in gods and tin gods, which demand blood, revenge, and punishment from you, you believe that a right measure of revenge and retaliation has been decreed for you, and that you shall shed blood and destroy life of those killed or murdered. For adultery and theft and deception, as well as for many other things, just as the gods and tin gods you have invented to command you, therefore it is only revenge and retaliation which you yourselves have invented that is meted out on the fallible ones. Indeed, however, the creative, or creation, did not issue any such law that a misdeed, or bad deed, shall be punished by revenge and retaliation involving harming the body or taking the life. Because the creative, or creation, gave the recommendation that you shall not kill in Ausartong. Do not kill out of revenge and retaliation, as a punishment, out of hatred, or jealousy, and also not through robbery, fury, and anger, out of greed and avarice, and many more besides, because it belongs to Aus Artan, and goes against the creationally given laws, and is not worthy of the people of your kind, or human beings. But you believe in divinities and tin gods to which you have assigned false and delusional mites and claims, as well as the instruction and demand for revenge and retaliation and punishment. So retaliation shall be practiced in right measure by free ones for the free, by slaves for the slaves, by woman for the woman, and by man for the man. But this is lies and deception, because no law and no recommendation of the creation demands such a thing. But the opposite, punishment for misdeeds and bad deeds shall only be given in accordance with the laws and recommendations of the primal power or creation, which are given in such a wise that no matter how fallible any one is, they shall not be harmed in life or limb. So every misdeed, fallibility, and bad deed of any type shall be punished in love and humanity, so that every fallible one, every child, every woman, and every man may draw a good lesson from it and turn to the better and good so that reintegration into the people or society may once again be possible when the conditions are good for it. If reintegration into the people or society is not possible because the criminal or murderous sense of the fallible ones does not change and no rationality and no love can be brought forth, as well as no peace and no concord or harmony, then the fallible ones shall be separated from the people, or society, for their lifetime, and brought to a place of fulfillment of guidelines, or place of execution of punishment, equals island, secluded area, etc., where they are imprisoned and live in freedom without the confines, within the confines, and learn and are provided with all the necessary things for their present existence. Places of fulfillment of guidelines shall be secluded areas and islands from which the guilty ones cannot get back to unconfined freedom, but must remain where they are. Be at all times lenient and forgiving in accordance with equitableness or fairness slash responsibility slash moderate. So it is, if anything is decreed on one by his or her next one, or by authority, or by the court, then the demand for atonement shall be made with justification, and the fallible one shall be taken for punishment through an equitable or fair-slash-appropriate conviction. Although neither life nor limb is allowed to be harmed, the laws and recommendations of the creation are explained, so that everyone may learn from everything and promote their knowledge and their wisdom so that they may become good, and follow the laws and recommendations of the love and of the creation, 
for their own benefit and to the weal of all, and create everything to the best in themselves. Only those who contravene these laws and recommendations of the creation commit an outrage against them and against the truth of the light and against everything that is rightful, and whoever puts themselves in the unright and commits an outrage against the truth will meet a painful punishment in themselves through lovelessness, discord, unfreedom, unpeace, and inequality or disharmony, as well as many things that have a negative sense and wrong value. There is no value in your life in re-retaliation and revenge, because through retaliation and revenge you turn yourselves into guilty ones and fallible ones. Therefore your acts of retaliation and your desires for revenge must also be punished. And you shall practice equitableness, or being fair, slash fairness, in all things. So you also have to observe equitableness, or fairness, between man and woman, because both of you shall be equal, and none given precedence. Therefore the same rights apply to woman as to man. The woman shall not be subservient to the man, and vice versa. Therefore the man shall not use the woman and her womb in salaciousness and selfishness for fulfilling his own pleasure, like a field which is plowed and sown at will for one's own enjoyment. The same rights shall prevail amongst and between both sexes also during sexual intercourse. Therefore equality in all things applies to man and woman, just as an equivalent value is given to both in the conjoining of bodies in order to beget offspring, or for the stimulating and joyful and joining and healing fulfillment of pleasure. And as you shall practice equitableness, or being fair slash fairness in all things, so also practice equitableness, or being fair, to your children, because they are no less or inferior than you. Therefore, you shall treat them as people of your kind or human beings, just as you treat those who are no longer young or are grown-ups and are not children anymore. And as you shall practice equitableness or being fair slash fairness in all things, so think about your life and your death, because after your birth, both are unavoidable for you, so that you must ponder them and find the way to both in calm and peace. Therefore, practice equitableness or fairness on your descendants and relatives, because when the time comes for you to depart from life, you shall have settled everything so that all your left-behind chattels and your wealth may be distributed in equitableness or fairness. But you few who are able to write, prepare a text with instructions on how and to whom your heritable goods, chattels, and wealth shall be handed over in whichever particular amounts. If you are, however, unable to write, then announce your last will to a scribe so that he can record everything in writing which is your final decision. If you leave anything behind, then make a writing or testament before you lay yourself down close to death and make the writing or testament for man, woman, and child, for the parents and close relatives or for friends and for whatever you wish in order to act in equitableness, or recognition, slash approval, slash fairness, when you make the writing or testament, or have it made, then act in equitableness or fairness, and do not cheat any of those who remain behind, so that no discord, bad blood, and strife, or even worse, may flare up, and those who remain behind shall not fall prey to avarice, and not call on the jurisdictions to break the last will of the deceased for their own benefits and the survivors of the deceased shall not be at odds with one another, and quarrel over the wealth and chattels, because such doings are not worthy of people of your kind, or human beings, and are only done by ones without equitableness, or unfair ones, slash irresponsible ones, slash ones without fairness, and unknowing ones, who are reviled by the people as scum. And as you shall practice equitableness or fairness in all things. Also practice equitableness or fairness in that you do not steal, destroy, or falsify any writing or testament 
that a human being has left behind after his or her death in order to settle everything. Any one who does this is committing an outrage against themselves and the truth and his or her fellow human beings, and there is never any boon from it, and those who do it will truly have a heavy guilt placed on them which they will find difficult to bear.